Hey, welcome to another video from Holbrook Aerospace. Today we're going to be going over uh, the HAVF format and specifically how to make your own HAVF airfoils and onshape. So to get started, uh, we're just going to do this one step at a time and uh, you can follow along and build your own templates and uh, also just pay attention to how the format works so that you can better understand it yourself and uh, hopefully fit your own airfoils. So to get started, I'll, I'll delete this uh, picture again here and re-import it. All you need to do is create a sketch on the front plane and you can pretty easily insert an image. Uh, we'll get the same uh, flow field image back. The purpose of this box here is just to uh, try to fill the airfoil in that box and the, the reference lines that we have further in the feature tree will be uh, easy to move on to it because you know, it's easy to Without any reference, it's easy to make the picture, you know, 10 times bigger, and that's a lot of uh, moving lines. So with that uh, done, the only note is that uh, Onshape really doesn't let you rotate the picture very easily that I know of. So what we're going to do, what actually turned out working to work pretty well, is bring the reference frame to the airfoil. So that way we don't actually even have to fuss with rotating the picture. We can bring the reference frame uh, right to the airfoil. And we're going to uh, just go right on the outside of this white area. And it's that simple. We're just setting the cord line here. And further down in, in the feature, we'll use the length here and measured with the other dimensions to turn this into a unitless airfoil. So the next thing, the crucial step, is to uh, create these splines. And these are just two uh seven point bezier curves with a tangency at the leading edge and a real thickness at the trailing edge you can use zero thickness if you want but that's a this is easily uh editable to work as that kind of template or you can have separate templates it's up to you the format works either way but uh yeah this is a uh, pretty f the skeleton basically of the format and uh it works really well just to with the solutions in the in the book to define all the 1600 most common airfoils you could desire and part of learning about uh how this works is you can realize you can make any airfoil you really want and you helps you understand how it might be used as an optimization language you know to find airfoil shapes you didn't know you wanted so it's a cool uh exercise in doing that and fitting it is pretty pretty easy to uh, start off. It's good to just evenly space all these uh, and usually get pretty close that way. There's some interesting talks on the forums about uh, the results of how these splines are stretched and you know what crossing them might do to the curvature, especially with different uh, the way different features in on shape work. So if you want to hear smarter people than me talk about all that kind of stuff, I suggest you you can head over to the Onshape forums and read that discussion, <laughs> even if it goes a bit in depth. So yeah, we got something pretty close here, especially for uh, just demonstration purposes. So we can leave that. And uh, so we just have the cord and the splines. So the next step is going to be measuring it. So. For that, I'm using this measure value tool that I found uh, from CAD Sharp, and it just it literally just measures all the lines. So a few of the lines we don't need to measure, like uh, you know, we know the x value for the trailing edge is just going to be, you know, the cord length. We know that the origin, the leading edge, is always going to be zero. So we start off with a second x2 point, and everything's measured in the same order, you know, as a proper proper coordinate file would be x2 x3 all x4 x5 s6 x7 x8 are all zero and then x9 10 11 12 and 13 would be the full chord length again but you go to 12 and you make sure to measure from these uh, perpendicular lines and you always get the correct distance never point to point but the point here is uh, we've got all these links, 
but they're not really coordinate positions, which is a problem. So we'll go through. Uh, another important thing is to get these y values. We're kind of measuring from this uh, C shape, which is just kind of like a frame of perpendicular chord lines. And we can use this. These measurements will always stay positive, and we can use them to create negative values in the coordinate system later. So yeah, the last measurement will be the chord, and that'll be very important for what we're doing. And this is just a duplicate system to create the numbers because these unspecified variable types don't work in the formula, but they are copyable directly to length values. So measurements, values, number values as n. And then we can start calculating now that we have all 20 variables that we need. And we could just scroll through. I'll explain the formulas for these. Some of these are just placeholders, which help humans like read through it more easily. Just uh, it's much more legible than just a bunch of numbers. Uh, but going through, we can see for oh, scroll down to the correct position. We can see that we're just scaling the x values by the chord, and that's really it's really that simple. For the y values, we have to subtract the chord first because we offset the measurement. Then we can divide by the chord. And for points like the origin, it's just always zero. We go down to the second Bezier curve in the format, and you can see again we're just dividing x values by the measured chord length, and we're subtracting the chord length and dividing by the chord length for the y values. And all these numbers should be, you know, between uh, negative one and one. If you're seeing something like two or three, you're gonna have either have a very unique airfoil or maybe done something wrong. So we've got all these numbers. These are perfectly usable, but we just have to get them off this page. So to do that, you can either write them down. Um, you can copy them. I'm sure there's some way to copy them directly without copying the whole table. But right now, it's easy to just copy the table and go over to our spreadsheet. So color coded here, this blue part is just what you're copying over every time. Regrettably, I don't know how to get the uh, formulas or the numbers inside of the formulas. So we'll actually only be using the original measurements from the, the measure utility we found. We're just going to turn that into unis, unitless uh, values so that we can manipulate them in sheets. So we're just getting rid of the millimeters and we can go directly into uh, making our arrays. So that'll just be the exact same process that existed in Onshape, just dividing by the chord and then subtracting chord divided by the chord for the Y values. And this is just a column and array format. The array will be what the feature accepts and what exists already in the book for the airfoil solutions here. So that would be equivalent to what you would find here, and both will work as inputs in the feature. So we'll go back here, make sure to copy this table, and just control V, paste it in. Everything should update. If we copy this, we should be able to go into our test part, grab the profile array, grab the line, make a custom input, name this foil field one, and we'll use a default trailing edge thickness from the coordinates. And it worked pretty well. So we can kind of extrude that just to see it a little better. That looks like. Excellent. So yeah, you can do this with any kind of image. Uh, we have another example here, Foil Field 2. It's a little bit more complicated of an airfoil, but uh, it's the same process. You've got, we pull to here, we've got just the sketch, then the chord line, then the fitted shape, splines on top of it, and 
we can just roll to the end after that. Copy the table. Go to our uh, Google Sheets and just copy this number and see what the result is. Custom, input the data, call this flow field two, and use the trailing edge coordinates from the input to the trailing edge. And importantly, remember to select the line. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like that works really well. Just kind of get uh, an extrusion to see how that looks. And, uh, you know, if you want to make an adjustment, you know, it's as simple as going into this sketch. You actually have to enter the sketch, the correct one. And, uh, you know, even if we were to exit this, We've got a, a little bit more unique shape there. It should be possible just to copy it over. And uh, we can even update the feature to have a slightly more obnoxious airflow. We'll put that back. We'll try um something with the clark y we've got uh clark y here just a quick clone of it and you can see it's the this is a much plainer airfoil so it's already fitted pretty well we'll just roll to end copy this table Create an airfoil, select the line, set to custom, input the data. I uh, skipped this down or something. Input the data, not the not the not the design table. <laughs> and we'll call this Clark Y clone. Using the default trailing edge from the coordinates. And we're going to say that's pretty good, Clark Y. And we'll test one more. Uh, so this is kind of like a balsa rib image from a model airplane. So we're going to turn it into uh, JVF format and uh, this is already pretty well fit as well so we can just exit the sketch roll to end copy the table get the proper array copy that and uh, make one more last foil Select the line, go to custom, input the data, and we'll go, we'll call this balsa rib using the default trailing edge thickness from the coordinates. And what that does there is you can actually just in units override the trailing edge coordinates. You know, if you're producing a propeller and you want a 0.3 millimeter thickness trailing edge, any coordinate or any HAVF arrays you input, you can override the trailing edge thickness to a real thickness, like say a third of a millimeter to help you, you know, get the most out of your 3D printer and help you reduce time for adjustments. So we'll just extrude this. And uh, that's a pretty good representation of the photo. So, just understanding how this all works this is uh these uh foils have been 
created so that they can scale pretty easily. So we can uh, take these lines and mess with them. They should rebuild just fine. And you can start to understand how this can save you a lot of time and help you become a more accurate modeler as well. So it's a great utility to learn how to use. And uh, it's a completely free feature on Onshape. And this is a completely free tutorial on how you can use this. So yeah, let me know if you want to have this specific template available on my site or you know what kind of software or CAD programs you'd like to see this in next. Um, as far as the templates for the uh, propeller competition, they're kind of antiquated by this new feature that the Onshape and I have released. So I'm considering taking them down because they're a little bit cumbersome, but they, they also are a good uh, illustration of how things work. Um, perhaps it would be better to replace them with just uh, templates using the feature. But uh, I'd like to hear everybody's opinion about, about that below in the comments. Uh, I'd like to think that that's simple, but there's just so many ways that you can use uh, use the feature with implicit and explicit chord definitions that it's almost helpful to have all the templates you could think of. So yeah, before I get ranting too much, uh, comment below what you think, like the video, and go buy the book. And uh, that's all for now. Bye.